head transplants. Are head transplants possible? If I put my head on your body and you put your head on mine, which one of us is which? How long can a human head survive without the body? If I keep a human head harvested from a freshly produced cadaver alive on a machine in my secret basement laboratory, would you make the mistake of ratting me out? At what point could science create a real life Frankenstein's monster? Can I really make a new human by bionicling a bunch of other ones together with a needle and recycled dental floss? Find out this time on Stealing Body Parts from the Morgue, but that's okay because it's for science. In November of 2017, Italian surgeon Sergio Cannavaro claimed to have performed a successful head transplant surgery, and then everyone in the scientific community promptly scolded him for either blatantly lying to the entire world or subjecting a human being to unproven and cruel mad science experiments. Whether you think this guy is a charlatan or a madman or both, many scientists believe we will be able to perform head transplants successfully in the future. While there hasn't been a successful recorded instance of a human head transplant, that's not the same for our animal brethren. One man who successfully performed a head transplant on a live monkey was named Robert J. White. After attaching the head of the monkey to the decapitated body of another, the monkey could see, hear, taste, and smell. Although the monkey survived, it looked confused, panicked, and in pain, which caused many people to question the morality of the experiment. I don't know why they didn't question it up until that point, but hey, you know what they say, sir put down that monkey or I will shoot, this is a restricted area. So I guess legally, I'm obligated to leave this one up to the experts. Robert says that he hopes that one day they could apply the same tactics to humans whose bodies have given out on them. Now I'm not saying the man isn't a genius, but he's acting like he's doing a really good thing by chopping off the head of a monkey and sewing it to another monkey's headless body. The weird thing is, even though he's doing a horrible thing, it might result in some good things. Imagine all the things that we could do with that. Dong and ball cancer spread to your entire body? Not anymore! And it's just as big as it was before the steroids. You wanna be a man? You wanna be a woman? Boom! Done! Lost the use of your legs? Check again, buddy. You wanna be a meerkat? I'm beating a dead horse. This is eventually gonna be a great technology for anyone who's gonna die. Which is everyone, eventually. Don't even worry about the inevitable slaughterhouse-esque body farms that would treat humans as medical cattle. I'm sure future humans will figure it out. We could just cross that bridge when we get to it. Another surgery similar to this took place in 1939 with a machine known as the Autojector, invented by one Sergei Brikhon... Brikhonenko? Brikhonenko? This. It's this. Sergei kept the dog head alive by basically hooking it up to a makeshift circulatory and respiratory system. The heartbreaking monstrosity that used to be a dog reacted to external stimuli. It blinked when its eyes were poked, licked its lips when they were dripped with citric acid, and pricked its ears up to noises nearby. It survived for a little while, but then it didn't. This episode is getting real sad real fast. Encouraged by this amoral monstrosity that he called success, he thought, might as well take this to the natural conclusion, and he and his crew got a body from someone who had hung himself three hours ago and hooked the man up to a head-keeping alive machine. I don't know if he got permission to take the dead guy, but that's not not what we're here for. Within an hour, the crew were actually able to read vital signs. Soon after, he started scream gurgling, the gurgle of someone who was gurgling their last scream gurgle. His eyes suddenly shot open, staring directly at the medical crew, who flipped out and decided to disconnect him to quote, let him rest in peace. A little late for that, don't you think? I could imagine this working kind of like a robot body, or like a hot glue it to a remote control car, or like a toaster or some crap. It's all the same thing. So if Sergei unpronounceable name is like Gombred, I put living dog head on stick. Vlad Demikov is like, hold my vodka, and creates this abomination. So pretty much how this goes down is bad Vlad gets a small dog and a big dog and severed the blood vessels, spinal column, and whatever else needed severing on the small dog and reattached it to the systems of the big dog. Both survived and were very responsive. They could eat and move individually and the big one even ran around. The two dogs passed away four days later. Even though any man who does this to a sweet innocent puppy definitely belongs in the worst pit of hell, Vladdy did have one redeeming factor. His work contributed a great deal to our modern technology and processes of organ transplantation and heart surgeries. So if you have a person in your life saved by an implant, you now know which old-timey Russian dog torture killer to thank. All of these surgeries are very reminiscent of Frankenstein. Yeah, I know the creature was Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Frankenstein was the guy, but Dr. Frankenstein wasn't even actually a doctor and didn't finish med school. You just wanted to correct me to seem smart in front of the internet. High key, good move for him not finishing med school. He never had to deal with that pesky Hippocratic oath. Do no harm. <laughs>
That's a good one. I could cover the experiment that was the inspiration for that book, but I've already stolen a lot from Salmonella. Unlike the child-friendly, buff-broken English spewing knockoff Shrek with bolts in his neck that Halloween has turned this creature into, Shelley's description would bring that big baby to tears. In her own slightly abridged words, his yellow skin scarcely covered the work of muscles and arteries beneath. His hair was a lustrous black and flowing, his teeth of a pearly whiteness, his eyes watery and shriveled, and his straight black lips. The monster was made out of both parts from the morgue and the slaughterhouse. While the monster we've come to know is not the sharpest light bulb in the crayon box, the OG Frankenstein is described as a well-read vegetarian pacifist who just wanted love and acceptance. Oh, that's so corny. Well, it wasn't corny when she wrote it, but it's universal, so it was bound to be cringy eventually. Anyway, his horrific mistreatment he received from humans is what led him to kill. Dr. Frankenstein abandoned the creature at the moment of its creation. Being abandoned as a newborn is bad enough, right? But now imagine you're the unholy result of someone trying to make a Mr. Potato Head out of different sized limbs from the morgue and organ meats from the deli aisle. This is the first you've seen of the world. You don't know you're a 6'5 zombie man. At least when you're a baby, people think you're cute. So the obvious question, how far is science when it comes to creating a Frankenstein's monster? Unfortunately, unless the morgue starts offering free samples, I don't think this will happen soon. While I think it's possible that someone could potentially get a bunch of organs and limbs that all share the same blood type and let their imagination take hold like pouring a bunch of different Lego sets together onto the ground, the fact of the matter is, with every piece coming from a different source, there is a high probability that the immune system will reject many, if not most of the organs and limbs it takes on. This would probably result in a death and therefore a failed experiment. Some of you may suggest anti-rejection immunosuppressant drugs, but to that I say, we just sewed a bunch of bloody limbs together from the morgue. To not die from an aggressive infection, you'd need a top-notch immune system. So basically, in every solution, the very thing that is supposed to save it will kill it no matter how you slice it. Think I'm wrong? I probably am. I have the same level of education as Dr. Frankenstein. No med school. Let me know how wrong I am in the comments. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Recently, other projects have been taking up a decent amount of my time. I will not stop uploading. If you like this video, please do everything you can to funnel robot good boy points down every orifice I currently have in my body. I will open more orifices for you to funnel them down, but right now you have to work with the orifices I currently have. I am sorry for this inconvenience. For every person who has been a part of my cult funneling robot good boy points down every hole that I have, I eternally thank you. I am very grateful. If you could create a Frankenstein monster to funnel them down my holes, I would very much appreciate that too. As always, like, sub, and hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Okay, bye.